exciting. So hello everyone, welcome to another episode of our Beyond Stigma series focusing on Middle Eastern and North African representation in the media, where we delve into conversations surrounding different identities and experiences of those who have worked in the media and the arts and entertainment industries. Today we are joined by our very special guest, Mr. Karim Hazaya, whose stage name is also Karim Mataz. Karim is a professional actor, executive producer and company director at Manchi Luntry Productions. And he is currently a master's student in media and public relations. Karim is originally from Syria, but has been living in the UK for the past nine years. Karim, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. So just to get started, there's like a general question that we've been asking all our guests. What made you want to pursue a career in this industry? Well, it's a good question. And really creating films is magical you get a sense of magic when you are on the set and then you're creating the magic on the set with amazing people, amazing uh, creatives who in a way share with you more than they would share in their normal life, right? Um, and then off stage, you are going with the crew who are incredible as well. Um, you know, they, <laughs> they share their life experiences with you while being, you know, um, you know, very nice to you as well. And like, you know, you end up becoming friends with these people. And then afterwards, uh, you go to the post-production um, and then you get to see the magic in reality. And you're like, wow, this is what all of these different people have been working towards. Um, and, you know, somebody somewhere in the world be, will be watching that and their lives will change a bit because of that as well. Um, so yeah, I would say I, I wanted to change people's lives for the better and, uh, bring more positivity, positivity through our work and through my work um, and um, give people an idea of who we are, really. <laughs> and who would you say are your biggest role models in the industry, if you have any? Well, that is actually um, a question that took me a while to, under, uh, to, to think about. <laughs> um, I would say Mustafa Aqad is one of my favorite directors of all time um, of Arab descent. Um, Mustafa created Halloween and he created The Message and oh. um, I cannot remember, but a, a movie about uh, the Libyan struggle uh, back uh, uh, when the Italian uh, occupation was there. And I see him as one of the most prolific directors when it comes to his style of shooting and his style of uh, directing his actors as well. Um, and he could play on many different fields. You know, he can be playing on, in horror fields, uh, and then straight away he's going to like something historic and uh, you know a, a war genre as well so mm -hmm. like he, he plays around with the genres and I feel that's something I, I, I look up to because he was given the, the creative freedom to do so mm -hmm. you know? yeah. um, but then when it comes to the you know um, the pop culture <laughs> uh, people I would say um, not that they are you know any less amazing um, Martin Scorsese would be one of them, Francis Coppola, um, Al Pacino, and Robert De Niro, and George Clooney would be my three amazing actors for me. I, I, I look up to them and I'm like, what a career. <laughs> going off from that, this is again another very broad question, but it's one to get us chatting a bit more about the whole topic. So what do you think about the current representation of MENA individuals in the media as a, as a whole? Okay, I don't want to generalize because there's a lot of good people who are putting the effort and they are pushing the good narrative about us. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen it happen, you know, and I'm hoping it will keep happening. Um, but I would say it's wrong. And in, 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 in most of it, it's wrong, you know, because they yeah. are looking at us and they're seeing us from one kind of scope where you are an individual who is brown, who is <laughs> either holding a gun in his hand or you have an oil rig <laughs> you know, yeah. and there's no actual factualization of who we are as a pop culture. There's a pop culture that that exists in the Middle East, yeah. right? And they overlook it. <laughs> Just recently, um, there was uh, the mummies uh, moving the mummies from oh, yeah. in Egypt, right? Yeah. And I was like, this is this is this is how who we are. <laughs> this is exactly how we should be represented in the media as people with mm -hmm. history and and something rich to, to give, to, you know, enhance people's lives, you know, yeah. from our knowledge. <laughs> yeah, but you don't think that's happening at all? Like it's very 
limited. Minimal, <laughs> say, very minimal. Yeah. And I understand that, that there are misconceptions, right? Um, not everybody has seen our culture. Not everybody has been to the Middle East. Not everybody has a Middle Eastern friend, although I yeah. think now with Facebook, you can easily just, <laughs> you know, go checking around and stuff and making friends. But, you know, it, 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 I can understand that there are misconceptions, but our job through the media is to clear those misconceptions, right? To exactly. bring people together, not for only changing the narrative, but also you get, let's think about it as a capitalization style, right? You're capitalizing on this situation. You're making your audience, you're, you're branding, you're, you're, you're branching to other audiences, right? Who are mm. the people you have the misconceptions about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's in, it's in the interest of the industry to to portray us in the right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I 100% agree because, you know, as someone myself is often the MENA region, when I see such a negative representation or incorrect representation, it makes you stray away from it. You don't want to do it. You don't want to have anything to do with that movie or TV show. It just completely, completely takes you away from it. And I know everyone from our background feels like that. And they sort of, not obviously not everyone, we can't generalize, as you said, but they kind of just cluster us into one category, you know? It's just like they put that one MENA person in there and they're supposed to represent the whole MENA region. And it's just like, there is, so, like you said, there is so much culture and there's so much art from that region. And it's just such a shame to not portray it correctly. Um, they're still stereotyping the people that they're putting in there, yeah. that one minute person. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And you're like, oh, like, there's so much, you know, we have so many religions, we have so many yeah. cultures, so much background, so much stuff that happens. Mm -hmm. and you're just focusing on like a, a tiny frivol of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's always like when there is that one Mina character, I mean, there barely ever is, but when there is, I feel like they always make the fact that they're from that background, their whole storyline. I don't know if you feel the same, obviously you working, working in this industry, but, and, and like you said, the, the media is so, it's such a big platform and they have the power to get this correct information out there and portray different people, you know? So it is, it's a shame, you know, that it you say Google. that too. It takes a Google, it just oh, takes one Google to just find out and, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I really don't know why they don't take that much time. I mean, people might be busy, <laughs> right? People yeah. have busy schedules, but it literally takes you to just one second just to find out what's right and what's wrong through Wikipedia or something. Yeah. And so you worked on a variety of different projects. You know, I've looked at your background. You've worked for, for commercials, for Shakespeare focused kind of uh, shows and all that. So it's really great. Working in like, that kind of industry would you say that you have worked with pe a lot of people from a similar background to you or or not maybe not exactly so like i i have i have yet to work with another syrian actor or actress oh, wow. yeah wow yeah okay so that's one that hurts <laughs> oh yeah then. you know um but we could be the catalyst that changes that you know, mm -hmm. and 100%. I remember when I started doing this, I was like, I want another kid somewhere where I grew up to mm -hmm. look at the TV and be like, I could be that kid or I could be that guy. You know, I could be doing the films he's doing. I could be doing the characters that he's doing, you know, yeah. and not have to look and be like, oh, I cannot do that because it's impossible, you know. And I remember when I was a kid, yeah, like if people would say it's impossible because nobody was there, there, there was nobody in the media that represented us so people would sense. automatically think it's impossible and, you know yeah yeah and you um came from syria around nearly 10 years ago nine years ago yeah um which is really interesting because so my question for you is as a syrian do you think going into the arts is like like really celebrated are they more positive about it i think in syria there is a bit is it there, not a bit there's a lot of creativity and um, the Syrian people are amazing. They're smart, they're geniuses. You know, the styles that they come out with. There was this one TV show called Bukhaddo. And this show, um, it shows you like sketches, comedy sketches. We grew mm -hmm. up to those things, you know, and I still employ some of those tactics in my acting today. Mm -hmm. You know, they're funny, they're, they're hilarious. 
<laughs> you know and people still laugh at, you know when I do those weird faces and stuff you know mm -hmm. um so yeah I, th I think there's a lot of creativity and it's accepted it's 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 encouraged okay. right but you still have of course the conservative part right you have liberals and you have conservatives and you always will have those two people kind of like bumping heads no you shouldn't right. do this no you shouldn't do that bumping heads yeah. um but personally from my side of the family i i, I didn't I, I did get a bit of uh pull a push and <laughs> push and pull because i was right. doing a law degree before i did uh, my oh, theater right <laughs> yeah so <laughs> but then they, they they accepted it they were like yep you do what you like um looks like you're interested in it and you're not gonna quit so <laughs> right right okay that's yeah. great so it seems to be more of a political thing, you know, the liberals and the more conservatives being involved yeah. and some saying yes and some no. Um, but also movie. So did you do acting in, when you were in Syria as well? Or did you start that when you came here? No, I actually started in Syria, actually. Um, I did a couple of uh, productions uh, as well back. At, we did like a, an exchange program to Norway. It was my school that was involved and we did like okay. a production there, two productions. Mm -hmm. um and yeah like um i was doing it since then but fun funnily enough i wasn't that invested in it so like okay. I, I only got the thing because i was playing the guitar and i'm a musician as well so i was playing the guitar and they were like okay you had a little band that you started in school so we're gonna give you this exchange program go do something there that was good <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. yeah. yeah um and then i don't know i just stopped doing acting for a while and focused on different stuff um started mm -hmm. doing my law degree and then went back to acting after, yeah, I didn't finish my law degree. <laughs> I was like, uh, there's something else waiting for me, something um, where I can voice my, give, give myself a voice, right? Without having to be going through a lot of paperwork. <laughs> right. <laughs> so following on from that, this is, again, is another very broad question, but what have your own experiences as a mean individual been like working in this industry? You know, whether that's before when you went through or when you came here was, do you see a big shift in like culturally or even, you know, trying to get jobs here or trying to focus on that here? Would you say that, you know, how, how did that feel and what kind of experiences would you face? Want to come into this industry, they got to know that you're going to be sacrificing a lot and yeah. you're going to be putting yourself through tests. <laughs> I would call them tests. And uh, each yeah. test will, will grow you as a person. But they're going to be tough, you know, you're going to have to like buckle up and do the work, especially yeah. like doing the work, I think mostly was what I needed to figure out because I didn't really understand how much work goes into the productions and how much work goes into understanding the production, understanding the character, understanding uh, the um, story arc and how it, the story goes and, um, you know, how, how can you portray the emotion? as well mm -hmm. so uh, emotional acting was one of the main things that i had to work hard on when i when i got into the industry as a mina actor um i would say there were issues with my castability <laughs> right okay mm -hmm. you know so yeah. and, and and at some points it got me angry not gonna lie and mm -hmm. kind of like internalized it and shifted it towards my art um but you know like i do not look like the molded cast that they have of the syrian individual right, right? Okay. and i've seen so many films that are being cast right now with syrians quote unquote <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like not one of them looks like he's syrian like not yeah. one or she's syrian not one <laughs> not one yeah. you know and i'm like so like, did you have a you know like i i i i don't know i i just didn't understand why they didn't have somebody who's from syrian descent actually participating and helping at yeah. least in a, in, in, a, in a consultant capacity you know mm -hmm. what i mean um i don't know i don't know it's uh, it's a bit of a tough area and a tough, tough cookie to crack <laughs> yeah but i think personally because of all of the confusion that i got from like you know trying to understand my identity within the industry and trying to see where i could be cast um i created my company right I, i'd start mm -hmm. doing my own work and i yeah. was like through this company, I can create the work that I want to do. And through that, discover who I actually am. Am I Syrian? Am I American? Because I have an American accent. Am I mm -hmm. British? Because I live in England. <laughs> what am yeah. I, right? And then I was like, let, let me put all of these things together and create my work 
And through that, people, I think, will understand me better. So, you know, as, as an actor, I decided to become a director and an executive producer. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that's interesting, because I was actually going to ask you about um, your production company, Munchy Lunchy. So, yeah, I was going to ask you about that and your kind of your vision with that, which I guess you kind of touched upon. Um, but I guess it's so you say you kind of produce that because of how difficult it is to get cast and, you know, kind of get that main role as a Syrian in that industry. So future, like long term wise, what do you want to do with this production company? Like, What's your final kind of initial vision that you want to do with this? <laughs> I think I put it in caps in the about section create positivity with our work <laughs> yeah that's it we just want to create positivity we want to create i want you to be seeing films where the character is <laughs> uh there's two mismatched characters right and they fall in love and, and you know one of those rom-coms and you're going to see a syrian guy in it and a syrian or a syrian girl in it you know what yeah. i mean and you're not going to think about it oh that's a syrian guy oh that's a syrian girl you're just going to think about it as two characters right yeah or yeah. you're gonna see you know all those like cliche film characters that you get right with the lead where everybody likes it and you know people go to films to watch it you know like films you you, you used, people used to go there and have like a, what was it I cannot remember the terminology for it but when people eat a lot of uh, popcorn yeah popcorn flicks or something like that I don't know I think so <laughs> Yeah, something popcorn like flake. Okay. Yeah, so people would go and just eat popcorn and watch the film and enjoy it, right? Yeah. Uh, now it's more, it's becoming so political <laughs> that people are yeah. having to like sit down and go like, what? Do, do I believe in that? Do I disagree? Do I agree? I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, so uh, we want to just create something that people will enjoy. People will have fun watching, um, you know, whether that may be horror or, you know, we just uh, created a three minute short film called Whistle. And right. we entered it for a competition with the host, uh, Baifa. Um, and uh, we created another film, uh, which hopefully we'll be uh, re releasing soon. And we'll be making more. We'll be making more, you know, all about futuristic filmmaking, mixing theater with film. Um, nice. You know, in your face theater, at, you know, is my main uh, inspiration as well. So I like to show reality as it is. <laughs> yeah. Not making it in any beauty pictures or anything like that, because mm -hmm. that's how you can create change you know you can create positive change and create beauty through that um so yeah that's basically why uh we created i created Munchie Munchie productions and uh we have a team now which is working together uh freelancers <laughs> yeah. oh that's really really great and i and i like how you're saying you know you're trying to just make films you know it doesn't have to be so political and like always thinking about is this the right you know like making the whole storyline about this person being syrian or this person being mina but at the same time, do you think, you know, being a company director and an executive producer for Munchie Lunchy, you kind of, do you think you have more of a power to cast more people from a diverse range of backgrounds, you know, not just in terms of ethnicity, but maybe gender and other, um, you know, other things as well? Do you think you have the ability to do, to do that now? Yes, and I can also see that I can be bringing new talent, right? young talent, talent that, you know, like for example, the, the whistle, we had people from Italy, we had people uh, from uh, Croatia, India, we, we had many, many people from different countries working on this production, right? And yeah. uh, different ethnicities, genders, um, and, you know, hopefully we're gonna be working with more. And like, I like to work with new people as much as I can to, you know, build up their resume and build up my resume. <laughs> Yeah, you know, because yeah. it works both ways. We work together and we help each other. And this is how this industry should be always, 100%. you know, help and help, help and help. And this 100%. way, everybody will win. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think it's really great what you what you guys are doing. And I I know in the future, you know, you'll get to where you want to be. It sounds really, really great. Actually, so a change of conversation. So you've done you're doing a master's right now in media and public relations. So I can see the media part. So do you want to use the public relations part for your work yeah. as well? And how so? <laughs> yes, yeah, so hopefully in the future, uh, I'm hoping that we can create some kind of company which will handle public relations for, um, well, for companies and, uh, you know, um, organizations and maybe governments, let's see. Um, but hopefully the way we want to work with it is to create 
positive change again <laughs> through our yeah. public relations, right? And um, I like public relations. The reason I went into public relations is the word public relations. It's not, you know, you're not promoting a, a product. You're, you're kind of like working with the people, yeah. you know, together in a, I would say, asymmetrical, uh, sorry, symmetrical way, right? Mm -hmm. So you're working uh, where somebody is giving you something and you're giving them something in return where you're going to have a communication line open with the public, right? Yeah. And I think the public can bring a lot of attention to many issues that need attention, especially recently with what happened politically. Yeah. It was, you know, and it's kind of still happening, you know, um, I, I would say politically, I'm, I'm talking, you know, back in America, which everybody I think agrees was insanity. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. It, it was like from a film, like I, I thought we were living a film. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, like I think we, we uh, through, through public relations, we can actually eliminate getting to that point and um, not only protect images, but also make sure that the image is as clean as it could be you know, with the, with the public, you know, so mm -hmm. it could get the public's approval. So the public would be happy and, <laughs> you know, the person or the company or the brand is happy as well. Because yeah. at the end of the day, people need brands. People need to, you know, go eat somewhere or get food somewhere or, you know, they need, they need, they need you know, we work as a society. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So public relation yeah. will be the medium. Yeah, that sounds really cool how you bring in that all together. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, it, it's all, you know, ideas and stuff. Um, once we get them into reality, then yeah, I think we can change something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that vision's really, really great. Um, and I, I think we kind of touched on this. And so going back to when you said when you first came from Syria and you were trying to, you know, do the acting positions and everything, and you said you felt quite angry and upset. And you know, how did you go about that, you know, initially? Because you still did a lot of work, you know, even I'm pretty sure before you started your production company. So before starting your production company, so in between that, in between time, what, how were you working around that? How were you trying to get the roles and, you know, make that change in that time? I applied to everything. <laughs> yeah. I applied to everything, you know, <laughs> um, and I speak French. I okay. speak uh, Spanish. Um, I brushed up on both because I needed to brush up on them. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, I'm not going to be boxed. I'm not going to be boxed. You know, from yeah. the beginning, I wasn't going to be boxed. From mm -hmm. the minute I went to my theater uh, school and did my theater program, I was like, I, this is, I have a plan. <laughs> There's something I want to mm -hmm. do. And, you know, the production company was actually one of them, you know, like it was already in my head <laughs> from yeah. then, back then. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's the thing. I, I just wanted to be able to to play any role I could play. So I applied to every role I could apply for. And people, when you apply to roles, right, they're gonna give you some, some people will give you chance, right? And once you get that chance and you ace an audition or ace a self tape, you're good. You know, people yeah. are gonna accept it and they're gonna be like, okay, you can play this role, you can play that role. I played multiple roles that were, you know, not Arab in any way or shape mm -hmm. or form. <laughs> yeah. You know, especially the Shakespeare ones as well. Like I was playing Cassio and playing, Hubert de Berg. Uh -huh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so yeah, that's, it was uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. So that's so it's good to hear that you've managed to land yourself some roles that not were not, not necessarily, you know, identity. But did you at any point do any roles with you know taking your Syrian background? I did. Okay. I did. Um I did a role um which was with the Ava Hunt Theater Company. Right. And the role was for a project called Destiny. Uh, sorry, Journeys of Destiny. <laughs> yes. So Journeys of Destiny was a, a story about two uh, refugee uh, brothers yeah. who leave Syria and they go to Australia. And in Australia, they achieve amazing grades and they get scholarships for, you know, their dream jobs and everything like that. And it's based mm -hmm. on a true story, which is uh, Saad al-Kassab and uh, his brother, uh, okay. Omar al-Kassab, if I'm not right if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> it's been a long time since I did that uh, production. Um, and yeah, I, I chose uh, to, to, to participate in that as well, because they told me what the role was going to be about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not from a political standpoint, but I chose to, to play in that role because I felt, first of all, we were going around schools, teaching them about refugees, 
and mm -hmm. those schools wow. were in rural areas in the UK. So we were going to those schools mm -hmm. where some of them were actually, some of the parents did not allow their kids to go there because yes, some we were going what? to perform and it was a, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's... But, you know, going there and doing it felt great because yeah. you would see those little kids <laughs> right, mm -hmm. looking at you and going like, really, did that happen? And one kid, I remember saying, oh, I'm like this something years old. So it happened like 10 years ago, like yeah. before I was born. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. She's like, still I'm like, yeah, it's still happening. Wow. So, you know, th there was a lot of um, positive feedback from them thinking about what, what a refugee is. Because at some point yeah. we, in the media, we were portrayed as the wrong kind somehow, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that kind of like negative stereotypes started coming out. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I myself am a refugee, you know, and, you know, I, I don't see myself being, <laughs> doing any of the stuff they are talking about in the media, yeah. you know, so, um, yeah, yeah, it was a good thing to do because I felt we were changing, changing things positively towards the better. Wow. I mean, it just sounds like such a powerful project, you know, to be it able was. to go and... It is. I think um, right now they're working on uh, another project called Destinies. Um, which I will also be uh, a part of. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, Ava Hunt Theater is one heck of a theater company. Wow. That no, that sounds like really, really amazing work. And again, it goes back to show how powerful media and art is. You know, the fact that you can deliver that message across to such a young audience and have them actually understand it. You know, um, and empathize with it. And under, you know, it's just great. It's just really great. And that's one of the things I love. So much about art the fact that you can do that so easily you know once you have the when you once you take that first step you know it's really really great um and for the for the roles that you said um were just like you know normal roles that you just applied for did you feel like your identity at any point made it more difficult to apply for them or necessarily get the roles were you ever for example questioned about your background at all or or anything like that or not really nothing that comes to my to the top of my head to be honest okay. you know um i think the uk because we have so many um we had issues uh you know raised about representation and all of yeah. that it kind of changed a bit um i i, I couldn't tell you if there is you know okay. i couldn't tell you but i know there might be where some issues came out with you know backgrounds or you know um, accents maybe accents you know because i i don't i do right. not hold an arabic accent right but somebody uh -huh. maybe only has an arabic accent would find it a bit more difficult to right. navigate the the industry um again i i, I cannot from my own experience i really cannot tell you <laughs> oh, I've well. had any. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear, though. That's really good to hear that you didn't, yeah. you know, get pinpointed for that. Because um, yeah. I don't know why I assumed, like, with a lot of people from that region, that they would have some more difficulties. But it's good to hear that that's not the case. And it seems like maybe more is being done for representation. And um, yeah. and you said you didn't really work with anyone from Syria. You're yet to work with someone um, from Syria. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> hopefully, maybe someone that watches this will hit you up and be like yeah I'll, I'll start and film with you or something <laughs> so you said um so yeah you don't really work with anyone from Syria but what about from me in a background have you worked with a lot of people from that region yeah so um currently um I have uh so from our own production uh we have our, our production manager Mo uh he's from Egypt and yeah. um you know, I met him through a uh, Mandy workshop <laughs> of all yeah. places. Um, and he went to, my, to the same university as me as well. So we were like, ah, oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm working with him. Mina background, I'm, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> it's very specific. So yeah, you don't, you don't is, have to. The thing is because <laughs> I'm trying to remember, I feel like we need to work on that. Right. <laughs> because yeah. I... It should be easy for me to be like, yeah, I, I worked with this guy and that guy on three different projects. We worked on with these three people, but it's just it's it's not coming to me, especially like working in here in the UK and right. 
you know, in America, I worked like on a short film there, but like still there was, um, I was the only Mino. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, you, you know, you think that you'd think like that's because you didn't actually work for many months, but on the positive side, you know, someone might say, oh, it's because there's so many different people. You don't even think about it. It's such a positive environment. You don't think about who's from where you just work with them. But that's just very, yeah. very positive thinking. It's very <laughs> I positive, know, isn't it? I don't know if it's realistic, but <laughs> one might think that. Um, yeah. I mean, again, I, I wouldn't completely know. <laughs> no. And so as like a closing question, mm-hmm. um, again, a very broad one, but what do you think can be done in the future? Or what do you want to see done in the future to ensure better representation in media and in this industry overall? Honest reflection on the scripts honest reflection like yeah. don't skim over a script and be like oh okay so what well, arab oh yeah cool let's get that guy who's going to be that thing or that girl who's going to be that think about it think about what what we are and ask us talk to us put people who can talk to you about what we do look at our pop culture work together with other pop culture you know leaders in the mina in- region you know um I think when we work, again, when we work together, we can create better stuff and we can create things that are not in the, uh, in the ars- uh, arsenal of actors in here, right? Or directors, yeah. you know, because you have styles, you have techniques that are in the Middle East, but they're not here, yeah. you know, or they are, for example, in India and in Bollywood, but they're not employed here. You know, recently they started doing that. They started getting a little bit of Bollywood, a little bit of, uh, you know, the Mediterranean, a little bit, yeah. not that much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they, 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 you know, just go there and go deeper and, and delve into it and research it more. And I think you're going to be amazed and you're going to find stories that are incredible, incredible mm-hmm. stories that have never been told. We are in a recycle culture right now. We need to stop recycling. Yeah, oh, I 100% agree. <laughs> we need to stop yeah. with sequels and prequels. Oh my and God. Sequels. <laughs> <laughs> Could it, I couldn't agree more. It's just getting so tiring seeing the same right. thing being done. And uh, there's so much out there. Make a new story, please. In my yeah. day of just going outside and <laughs> interacting with people, I can, you know, see more stuff that are being done than what's going on in the TV, <laughs> you know, or something like that. You know, like there's more action and drama. And <laughs> yeah. I, and I feel like it's because, I don't know, I might be wrong, but it's kind of the safety of it. You know, they think, okay, that did so well when it first came out, it's going to do well again. But a lot of the times it comes out and it's not anywhere near as good, you know? And I think they assume that it's going to be safe, it's going to make them lots of money. But I think people are just getting really tired of that now. They're not making money. They're not. They're not, they're not either. That's so true. They're they think making... they are. <laughs> no, they're not. Because you are, again excluding a whole segment that you can be capitalizing on <laughs> yeah yeah you know i say capitalizing because i think like people who are in executive <laughs> positions they'd love to hear capitalizing and you know okay <laughs> that, that those trigger words <laughs> very very true um yeah and hopefully yeah hopefully we get to that we get more people to be beside the people writing the stories hopefully be the people writing the stories um yes. funding all of this you know making sure the correct information is there the correct representation is there um and hopefully with people like you, yourself that are you know doing so much work on this and have your own company dedicated to directing and making all these movies and um shows i think we're in taking the right step to the right direction so yeah i hope so <laughs> I really yeah. hope so. I really hope so. And um, yeah, maybe in the future we're gonna see a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I truly hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Truly hope so. Well, thank you so much, Karim. It was so so great to talk to you and hear about all your experiences, about all the work you're doing, about all your thoughts. Um, thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Um, thank you, I will link Karim's uh, Munchy Lunchy Productions details in the description box his own socials as well. And yeah, if you have any questions, let Karim know. (laughs) Thank you so much. I'm an email away. (laughs) Amazing. Thank you.